Welcome to Heritage Hall Museum in Slater, Iowa. Today we'll take you on a tour of our latest exhibit, The History of Hats. We were recently gifted with over 25 hats dating from the 1950s and 60s, and we acquired over 25 more from our members and friends. An exhibit was born. The History of Hats briefly documents the changes in women's lives, focusing on the era of the 1930s to the 1970s, after which hats were seldom worn. As fashion trendsetters, the First Ladies of the United States led the nation in the wearing of hats, from the overdressed, elaborate hats of the early 20th century to today, when hats are almost never worn and dress is much more informal. An important reason why women wore head coverings and hats over the centuries can be attributed to the writings of St. Paul in the Bible, which decreed head coverings for women. By the 1700s, women's hats were a symbol of social status, wealth, and taste. Hats and head coverings were also necessary for warmth and protection, and by custom, married women covered their heads. Early on, millinery shops created custom hats, adding trim to suit the customer. Mass production made hats more readily available, and women of all economic classes were then able to indulge in making a statement with a hat. Until fairly recently, hats were always worn when a woman was in public. During the 30s and 40s, hats were often worn by women while working, sitting at their desks. These are three hats representing three decades. This modified beret is from the 1930s. This brushed felt beauty is from the 1940s. And this derby is from the early 60s. Rationing of materials during World War II in the 1940s made practical hat styles more popular. Extravagance was un-American. Still, hats were something to brighten the mood and were seen as morale boosters. 1940s styles included the turban and the snood, which were popular for women working in the war effort. Both were practical head coverings, but could be glamorous too. They were often handmade. Although we don't have a turban from this era, perhaps we could recreate one. As the war temporarily advanced the status of women, hats were an important representation of a woman's taste, status, and wealth. A woman was not dressed until she put on her hat. For many, a hat was something to plop on their head as they left the house, but purchasing a hat was still a big decision. Some of the many styles of hats in our display include the cartwheel, the crescent, the beret, and the pillbox. After the war, at the urging of the government, women returned to the home and left the jobs to the returning GIs. They were encouraged to focus on being homemakers again. Hats became part of a complete turned out ensemble for women, from makeup to her seamed stockings. The 1950s started with Mamie Eisenhower and Pat Nixon and ended with Jackie Kennedy and Audrey Hepburn. Early on, conservative was the word, and a woman still wore gloves. Hats were smaller and often sat on the top of the head like a plate. The hat dictated the hairstyle. During a social event, the gloves might come off, but the hat stayed on, once again signaling the taste, status, and wealth of the wearer. The pillbox was a popular style, as was the crescent and the head-topping platter. An icon of the mid-50s, Lucille Ball played the hapless housewife, seeking her husband's approval. In real life, she was a successful businesswoman. In the early years of her show, I Love Lucy, she was always hatted. In those days, the hair was styled to suit the hat. 
Two famous weddings of the 50s were Jackie Kennedy and Grace Kelly. Both wore a modification of the Juliet cap, a centuries-old design that is still worn by brides today. Another icon of the 50s and 60s was Elizabeth Taylor. Her many weddings throughout the 50s show the evolving hat styles of that decade. The styles she wore became more adventurous as she matured. The everyday woman continued to wear her hats to church and for special occasions, as shown here in a 1953 photo of the Slater Bethlehem Church Sunday School staff. Do you recognize anyone? The invention of hairspray in the late 1950s turned hat wearing on its big bouffant head. How could you fit a hat on those dues? The whimsy style in all its variations became a popular solution. The Catholic Church still required women to wear a head covering and the whimsy met this need. Women had not given up the idea of the hat just yet. For wearers of big hair, the whimsy fit the bill. A bit of netting, lace or trim, or a circlet of fur or flowers sat neatly on top of the most teased and sprayed hairdo. The 1960s saw the waning of hats as a common fashion. One influence of this dynamic change occurred in 1967 when the Catholic Church no longer required women to cover their heads. The 60s started with Jackie Kennedy's pillbox hats and ended with a free-spirited look from Ally McGraw. As Mrs. Kennedy evolved into Mrs. Onassis in 1969, so the pillbox hat evolved into simple flowers in her hair. Audrey Hepburn took cues from Britain's mod look by wearing the bucket and helmet hats. The emergence of the youth influence was a driver of fashion trends. The mod look evolved into the hippie era. Buffons deflated to mod looks and long hair, and buckets and pillboxes gave way to tightly crocheted cloches, berets, and poor boy caps. The pop culture influence led to a crafted natural look that was in stark contrast to the techie helmet and geometric look. Influenced by the hippie culture, headwear became casual, handmade, and artfully careless. The goal was not to look too put together. The over 25 crowd still sported more formal hats. Today, hats are still important at more formal occasions, but aren't expected. They are often worn to make a flamboyant statement for fun, as in hats worn at the Kentucky Derby. We are fortunate to have on loan a collection of what are commonly called church hats. Predominant in the African-American culture, the hats are considered a woman's crown and they symbolize triumph over hardship. Black women wore hats for more than just a fashion statement. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 5 says, But any woman who prays or prophecies with her head unveiled dishonors her head. It is the same as if her head were shaven. Many black women 50 and older still wear their hats, carrying on the traditions of their culture. We hope this tour has piqued your interest. If you'd like to see this display and other exhibits, please call for an appointment. Stick around to see a slideshow of all the hats that we have in our collection. I hope we see you soon.